this video we will see how static single assignment form and types and declarations of three address code format of the compiler designs are helpful so first let us discuss about static single assignment form so consider this example p equal to a plus b q equal to p minus c p equal to q star d p equal to e minus p q equal to p plus q so if this is a given three address code how to generate the static single assignment form we'll see so it the static single assignment form can also be called as ssa form so here first time when p is calculated it will be written as p1 so when second time p is calculated it will be written as p2 and when uh, third time it's calculated it's it will be written as p3 so similarly here q for the first time it's calculated so it's q1 and here it's calculated for the second time so it is q2 so now let us see how ssa form will be useful so first p1 equal to a plus b so q first time it's calculated so q1 equal to the first time p1 value calculated we are going to use here so p1 minus c then now we are overwriting the value of p so it will be written as p2 p2 equal to whatever the recent value of q that is q1 q1 will use here that will be multiplied with d and here third time p value we are, we are overwriting so it will be written as p3 equal to e minus p here so which p value will be using the recent value the recent value which is calculated is p2 so that will be used here and now second time q value we are overwriting so it will be written as q2 and here p and q values we are using here so which is the reason p value p3 p3 we have to use here and what is the reason q value updated one it's q1 so in this way the ssa form will be written so now let us see how static single assignment form for the control flow will be helpful so let us consider the example problem if flag then x equal to minus 1 else x equal to 1 then the next statement is y equal to x into a so here in the static single assignment form how will we overwrite it we'll see so here if flag this is the first x value x1 equal to minus 1 and here x value it is x2 else x2 equal to 1 so this is first x value and this is second x value so now here uh, what we are going to do this uh, condition based on the condition execution whether it's true or false based on that x value will become minus 1 or x value will become 1 so now we need to write a dynamic function phi which will be passed with the value of uh, x1 and x2 so it will either return uh, x1 or it will return x2 so now if the flag value the what will be written inside the pi uh, function that will be it, it will return x1 or x2 according to the flag value and that value will be assigned to x3 